Well, everybody, our rebuild, rewatching. I guess this wasn't a rewatch because it was my first viewing. Is that an end? We've seen all four rebuilds. Oh, I just spoiled it. But never mind. Let's act dramatic here. Also, we saved. Also, we're live. And we were going to maybe read Miller's review before we uh, decided to start recording, but we forgot. So now his, his review is going to be seen by the millions on the YouTube channel. We gave the first one four stars. Pretty good. We liked it a lot. The second one, incredible. Didn't know it was that good. Third one was pretty goddamn good. I like it a lot. I guess if I gave it a nine out of ten, I've got to go four and a half stars now. I didn't end up writing a review for it. Fucking Miller, get out of here. This one, we're giving it five stars as well. I liked it a lot. That was very dramatic and over the top. Uh, and not over the top. But anyway. If we head on over here, there's a much better... Oh no, I fucking got the tweet chain up. Chain, that might be a better word than threads. I tweeted this. And I feel like this represents the thing. This basically represents that everything Evangelion is great. And when it's worst... When it's at its worst, it's just slightly bastardized Evangelion, and that's the first movie. Uh, I don't have extensive notes for this. It's going to be all over the place. We're going to have to rely on chat a lot more, but hopefully we can, because this movie came out and everybody just watched it in like the last five days. So, I don't know where to start. I guess I'll start, because a bunch of these tweets are just about the beginning, so we can start there, and then we'll delve into a bunch of things. We're also on a clock, because the Pokemon Direct is in an hour and a half for us. In the future, when you're hearing this, it'll have already been over. You'll know all the things. You'll uh, all be mad on Twitter, I'm sure. But, so we're on a timer. Though, I don't want this to be that much more than an hour anyway, even if we weren't on a timer. But Anyway, is chat saying anything? Holding hands and running off together isn't something people do when they're not together. It is something an aunt and a nephew would do, uh, but we'll talk about the ships at the end, at the end. Hello. Also, that's not real. Uh, hello, uh, Kyle. Long time no see. How are you doing today? What are you doing? MMJ, 19, 1997. I don't know if I've seen that name before, but by the message, it would imply that I have. And this is like an old chatter or something, but we're reviewing Evangelion today is what we're doing. Um... We'll do chat questions. Uh, it's a new world, Shinji Mage. It is real. Shinji didn't literally make a world. It's all abstract bullshit. We'll talk about it when we talk about it. Um, so do we just start? I guess we just start here. This is going to be all over the place. This isn't going to be a structured. It's going to be free-flowing. All right, motherfuckers, let's start this monster. All right, it's the first tweet. Uh, I love the sound design. In the recap, it's cool. Also, the subtitles here are calling Asuka Langley Shikinami Shiki instead of just Shikinami. Uh, plus, I heard the voice actress say it in the recap. Uh, so it's either so this is either new audio or a slight retcon or has always been there in the films. I don't know. Somebody would have to clarify that for me. Um, I think all of the audio for the recap was new, because they were saying certain things that I don't think were in the original films. Um, so maybe that's just something that uh, was retcon. Doesn't matter. It was just an interesting little note. Um, plus, it factors into the thing that Oscar is also like a clone in this, I think. I think that's what's being implied. Because um, they talk about the Shikinami model, uh, just like the Iron Army model. Um, and that might be the, the name difference. And there's 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 talk of the original Oscar as well uh, that comes that... Uh, we'll talk about all that when we get to it. Um, also, in the recap, they don't uh, show the post credit scene of Karu stopping the third impact uh, with the Spear of the Lance or whatever, so maybe that's the only thing we're pretending didn't happen. This is not true because it is later in the film, so um, they do show that again when we're doing Karu's existential... Uh, Existential isn't the right word for that, but we're doing, we're exploring uh, Karu's motivations and psyche in the narrative at the end. Uh, having a movie uh, star, it's supposed to be start audio wise while the logos are still playing is peak cinema. I think some Harry Potters do that, uh, do it, uh, and they're all tens except for the first three. Fuck your third movie, bitch. We're doing some Prisoner of Azkaban slander because you got to do it. Uh, and now the film is is doing, and now this film is doing. We're doing well with this tweet. A great start. Please stop tweeting. We didn't tweet as much. Um, I think it's Mari singing to herself. Oh, I've, I've, it's, it's been like three hours. I forgot about that fucking opening scene where it's just like an undershot of the fucking Eiffel Tower painted red. That shit was cool as fuck. Um, Ava's in Paris. Um, 
but yes, the, I think the last Harry Potter movie does it where the, the, I think it's 20th Century Fox, is that the logo? No, it's the Warner Brothers logo. Uh, it's all, like, corroded with Death Eaters and stuff like that. Uh, it's just a cool little, like, ooh, we're starting early type thing. Avis in Paris is way cooler than it should be, uh, just like the song. And then uh, this fucking track starts playing. No, not the one about the, the neighbors in Paris, but uh, I'm pretty sure this is a new track as the nerve workers get attacked. Fucking awesome. That new track, I feel like it might have been a remix of the normal battle theme, but it was using, like, I'm going to say French instruments, even though that's not how to describe it at all. But it sounds like... um. One of the songs, kind of, from Pokemon in, in the 6th gen, 5th gen, 6th gen, which is Kalos, which is based on France. Uh, it's at the beginning of the film. I don't know the name of the track. Again, I just watched this movie for the first time. I like that track a lot. Uh, fucking awesome, awesome opening sequence. And the mean older girl with the short hair confirmed to be Maya. We talked about her in the last video. It is Maya. All three of them are with Will A and not uh, Nerve anymore. Nobody's with Nerve. Um... And got a congratulations from you, uh, from Ritsuko. That's cute. Maybe since this movie came out in 2021, they'll flesh out the lesbian angle here a little more. No, we didn't even get a near kiss like we did in End of Ava. Um, Ray with the dog, then Ray with the cat. Eye sparkling. It doesn't get much cuter than this. This I tweeted this before. She was looking at the baby. Also like this. Also, they better make um, the mother of these kids the class rep. They did, but she wasn't really like the class rep. They were doing the old uh, penis has calmed her down meme. Where now she's a nice housewife. Because uh, she gets laid now and she's not uh, cranky. Um, I'm doing well not tweeting. Uh, this is going to be a while. We're doing a wild jump now. That was all at the beginning. Um, I'm doing well not tweeting, uh, but I don't know how I feel about Misato and Kaji having a kid. I guess it works if they aren't together again. Uh, anymore, it should have been. Or maybe it works if they are. I don't know. Also, he's Shinji's age, which is clever. Turns out Kaji died, so makes sense. It's good. I don't, I don't ever want to see Misato and Kaji as a happy family. I think that's kind of antithetical to the whole thing they've got going on. Never mind, it's great. She's literally Gendo. It's good. She, but We're very much leaning into the Gendo and um, Misato parallels there. Obviously, the abandoning the kid for the greater mission because you're haunted by the lost love and all that stuff. Um, and then they confront each other later. And then uh, they both eventually get over it. Misato uh, quicker than, than Gendo. Ritsuko shooting immediately popped me big, yes. The end, they recreate kind of, again, uh, these are bigger points I'll have to get into, but Ritsuko shooting Gendo immediately, I was very happy. Um, I've got to the credits, no spoilers on what I think you'll have to show up to stream and find out. Turns out it was good. Um, uh, people liking the tweet. All right, there's two general things I have to get into, and I think I've already forgotten one of them. One of them is about the thirds of this movie, Oh, and the other one is about the, uh, let's get a fucking sticky note up. We got things to write down, things to sort out, and things to be. Um, so there's two points I want to go into. First point, uh, how it maps onto the original series. Uh, split. The L doesn't come before the P in split. Split into thirds. This movie, we talked about... I think we talked about the last movie being thirds, where the first third was action bullshit, the middle third was um, the slice of life stuff, and then the last third was the action stuff. No, it was a completely different breakdown. It was like the first third was bad. I don't know, we somehow did it. I've already forgotten, right? This has all been a blur the last three days of watching all these movies. This movie is very much also split into thirds, where the first where the first third is very much the slice of life aspect is the slice of life aspect. The middle third is a lot of action, and then the last third is end of Ava type uh, character exploration psyche bullshit. Uh, so the best part of Ava. They're all really good. I like them all. It's not like the third movie where the first part is bad and the other three. I think it's some of the best slice of life Ava stuff. I don't know about that, actually. I think it's a very good slice of life Ava stuff. I think the middle portion is maybe some of the best action in the series. I really liked all the action scenes in this. Obviously, we start with an action scene too, but... Um, and then last third, because when we were like... We were halfway through the movie, and I, I was starting to get worried. I was like, there hasn't been a single psyche explora exploration 
uh, medium-defying, weird bullshit, but we got it all in the last third, and it brought the home, and I was like, yes, this is everything I wanted. Um, that's, I guess, is the, the point about the thirds. Um, the How It Maps Under the Original series was something I've been talking about, I think, in the last two videos, and it is a video I will make about how this is very much just a retelling of the original series with some changed around elements in order to flesh out certain things. So, one of my favorite things from the end of Ava, and something I talked about in the last video, is the moment at, in the end of Ava where Gendo's, like, dying on the ground, um, and Yui and Karu both approach him. Uh, and he basically, the reveal is that he's just like Shinji and he was scared to get close to Shinji. He just wanted Yui and all this stuff. Now this is all handled in like two minutes in the end of Ava, but it's like a massive part of the last third of this film is fleshing that out. Um, so it's, 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 it's key that the, the rebuilds decide to flesh out certain aspects that the original series didn't, but it also doesn't flesh out, like, the same things. Like, there is very minimal Asuka backstory. A lot of it is implied in the Asuka bit at the end, in the mind psyche part, and that might be my favorite part of the movie still, because it's Asuka's stuff, and obviously she's my favorite character. Um, but, like, there's no Asuka flashback stuff in the second or third movie, um where it is in the original series a lot, right? The Ritsuko Gendo relationship isn't fleshed out, though it is implied in the movie. We're focusing on different things is basically what I'm getting at. Um, and fleshing out certain things. Because I feel like it's always been said, and I don't know if this is true, if Anno did an interview about this, or this is just bullshit the internet has made up, but what I've always heard about the rebuilds is that uh, it's a rebuild, right? Anno wants to re-clarify certain things to reiterate the message. Um, and it very much has the same message. Um, and we talked about this in terms of Shinji's development, how the f like the four films track onto the four parts of Shinji's character arc. Um, and that stays true in this, where all the similar elements are there. Um, I basically predicted in the last one that Shinji was going to be really depressed and then he was going to become the hero. Uh, which isn't the biggest prediction, but that's exactly what happens in the end of Ava, and that's also what happens in this film. Um, certain parts are focused on more, like why Shinji is really depressed at the beginning of end of Ava is sort of left up to you. Um, similarly, it's kind of like, it was just Karu, dude, get over it, but it's it's much more than that, and uh, there is a frustration with Shinji, especially at the beginning of this movie, where it's like, this is so fun, we're hanging out with all the old characters, and we're all having fun, Ray's becoming a person again, and it somehow is still the greatest thing ever, even though we've seen it 17 times now. Um, but yeah, and you're like frustrated that Shinji's just being a mopey prick, but he comes out of it as he always does, and that's the point. But, um, let me check in on chat, because I've said some general things here. Um... Where are we up to? I I was I it was always Asuka Shikinami Langley I think. Well, it's Asuka Langley Soyu is also a name. The, the Shikinami name didn't seem. I f maybe they say that doesn't she have like a Japanese name? And then she's like, no, it's just my Japanese name. My real name is Langley Soyu. Maybe that was Shikinami. I'm not entirely sure on that. Do you think Mari is a clone too, or she's still young because of the curse of Ava? Um. It's interesting what they say about the curse of Ava because Asuka makes... There's, like, a big point that Asuka's hair still grows. Um, I'm not sure. I don't think, like, any of this is to be taken too literally or to be focused on too literally, and I think that's always a trap with Evangelion. So, like, who's a clone, I guess, is literal, and you can think about that. Like, Mari is either a clone... But the, the thing is, like, clones aren't clones. Like, clones are people, too. That's the whole point of Ray's storyline. Um, so I don't think that's, like, a meaningful distinction, but either she was, like, a prototype pilot even before Yui, because Mari is 16, I looked that up, uh, when she was doing sexual things in the second movie, I think, um, and it says 16, and they did go with the, um, because it actually is kept quite subtle, not really, but, like, I might have missed it if I was, like, 16 and I was just watching this, without the context of what I know from the manga, which is that Mari is one of Yui's college friends, because... It's also, it's also all about recreating Gendo's life in Shinji, or, or Gendo failing to recreate his life in Shinji to make him understand. 
because all the elements are there. Mari is there for both of them. Like in the flashback, the one that I really like the Gendo stuff. The the point I was trying to make back uh, like ten minutes ago when I was talking about that is that I love that Gendo moment in End of Ava so much. So I should hate this one that it feels the need to explore it more in like a twenty minute sequence. But I actually love them both, and I think it's it's sort of something that has to be. Um, reiterated here is that these are two completely different things they are not the same uh the rebuilds and the original series and um if if you take it like that it's very easy to love both for me um instead of being like well one has to be this way because it's good because it's 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 subtle and short and this other one's long and drawn out and explored more both these things can be good they're just good in different contexts because they're in different movies in different eras made in different head spaces um But that was, uh, I was building up to a bigger point there, but, um, fuck, I, my mind just went blank for a second. I don't know what I was just talking about. I looked at chat and then looked away and didn't even read chat. I don't know what was going on. Uh, whatever I was saying was some genius shit. Um, I think it was about Gendo. Uh, name of the track is called Paris, is it? Hold on, let's look it up. Oh, no, we can't. This fucking uh, second video got pinged for playing Barefoot in the Park for three seconds. Hold on. I can mute it on your end. You idiots are getting muted from... You'll still be able to hear me, but you aren't hearing no desktop audio. Let me listen to this. Music is really good again. There is no song like Come Susa Todd. I think they should have just tried to play it at some point. It would have been cool. There really isn't that moment of Shinji just breaking um, in this movie. Um, and also it has to reiterate a lot more that it is a happy ending because a lot of people to this day still think End of Ava is a sad ending. Yes, this is the exact track. It's so good. If I talk while it's playing, you can hear it for a second. But my God, is it fucking great. And I love it and I love it and I love it. Especially when it's in the audio mix and it's coming through both ears. Oof. This is a this is a top ten all time fucking track. God, that, that that opening sequence was so cool. All the action in this movie is fucking great. Where they're fighting the millions of Ava whatever the fucks, and every time Mari spins around with her Gatling gun, they all burst into fucking crosses. That shit was fucking great, and I loved it. Um I think all the movies except for the first one have good CGI. Um I don't know. Um, do you want Asuka to force feed you? Definitely not. Um, is his connection bad or just me? Not just you. Black screen. Wait, did we go out for a second? What happened? Um, who doesn't? I guess it's all fine because people are still just talking in chat. Uh, I should probably keep an eye on chat more to see if everything is fucking up. Was it for like 20 seconds that it was fucked up or something? I guess I'll look back on it after I look at the recording. Have you seen Goat Jesus' two and a half hour review of the movie where he just shits on it? Miller has told me about this. He was one of the other people doing long form analysis on Ava way back when, and I'd uh, be curious about your opinion on his criticisms of the film. Well, repeat them to me and I'll see what I can say about them. I've never actually seen a Goat Jesus video. I know he is kind of like the Ava dude on YouTube. Um, I remember Endless Jess shitting on him in the Plebe and the Weeb episode and called him one of these morons or something who liked the third movie. So that's all I know about him. Um, I like how Oscar and Shinji are able to finally grow up at the end. Uh, really makes the Curse of Ava thing worth it. Symbolizes them being stagnant before uh, moving on. Hmm. I haven't really thought about that. The last scene I haven't thought about that much. I definitely don't think Rei and Karu are together. I definitely don't think Mari and Shinji are together. I definitely don't think Asuka and... Um... We were going into the Gendo trying to rebuild the his life with Shinji and the different elements he put around Shinji. So Yui is supposed to be Rei, and then Mari is there for both of them, being like the eccentric, trying to pull them in certain directions. Um, Asuka is kind of supposed to be Yui too, because Rei isn't supposed to be the love interest Asuka is, traditionally. Now, this never pans out, and that's part of the point. Um, and then Fuyutsuki is like the, uh, Misato, right? He, she's the, 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 like, elder 
uh, professor type. And so it's like trying to create the same loss in Shinji by having him lose Rei. This is more explicit in the rebuilds. I don't think this is necessarily part of the original series. Um, but it's to try and make Shinji have, like, go through the same thing, um, Gendo went through, so he'd come to the same conclusion, but Shinji doesn't come to the same conclusion. They make this very explicit when Gendo and Shinji are literally fighting, and, like, one of them has the Spear of Hope, and one of them has the Spear of Despair. Um, again, subtlety is not a strength of the rebuilds. Um, though sometimes it is, like, implying the Ritsuko stuff. Um... Oh, I real some of the visual stuff because the, the series, the rebuilds hadn't been as visually interesting with the imagery as the original series had been, and especially the end of Ava. There's no sandpit imagery that I think is as good as that, or the comes who's a Todd monologue, or the raise head, giant raise head going off, or the hand through the thing, and all the vagina penis imagery in End of Ava. Um, but at the end, uh, a lot of the the best stuff is at the end of the, the this last rebuild. Like, when Shinji and, and Gendo are fighting in the city, but it's like a play city of toys where, like, buildings are being pushed over, like, they aren't built into the ground, but they're just sliding. Because at first, I just thought it was bad CGI. But then he gets knocked into, like, the ocean or whatever, but it's clearly, like, a cloth or whatever. Um, and you can see him, like, bump into it and interact to it. Like, it's a... Uh, what do you what do you even call those things? Like it's something you stand in front of to take pictures of. So it's like a fake ocean. So it's like a fake reality. And then they go into all of the different iconic Ava settings and fight. Um, I thought that was really cool. But um, one of the first videos I've seen, Miller saying Miller really. I thought some good points were made. Him actually saying all superior. Him acting all superior, saying he doesn't like anime anymore, saying how the first and final shots need to tell a story so annoying. Is it more internet people saying there are rules to art? Like the first... Oh, and the last part where the water is blue again and is coming in, and we get more of the, um, the, like... Like, the preview to episode 24 of Evangelion for episode 25, where it's not finished, and it's just, like, the cells, and it has, like, the direction on the screen. Some of that stuff's in End of Ava. It comes back at the end of this movie. It's so good, where it's Shinji sitting on the beach, and it's not coloured in, and there's, like, text on it for what shot it is and stuff. Just breaking the fourth wall like that. I like, uh... The series, I feel like it gives more answers to make... I feel like... If we split them again. The original series is much more abstract and harsh in the way it tells things. Like, this movie is much more comfortable than End of Ava. It doesn't have the private army busting in and killing everybody you like. It doesn't have... Misato dies, doesn't get split in half as she dies, unless you sl slow down the footage. But we hit on all the same beats, right? Misato dies in both. Um, Ritsuko actually lives in this one, presumably. Um, they're more explicit that Asuka and Shinji can be happy at the end. It's not just like a... I don't know, a lot of people seem to interpret that negatively, and obviously the choking and the crying and then hit her touching his face and all that stuff. Um, also, they explicitly say that uh, Asuka has a crush on Shinji in this one. Uh, that may be the only thing I'm iffy on about the film. It's always been implied, it's always been a thing, but her admitting it, I guess... It, it, it's, like the part, it's like the point of Asuka's character is that she finally starts admitting things and being happy. Um... And, like, she even, like, Mari even says afterwards, like, that feels better. Now, the, point, the part of the point is that Asuka is moving on from that. Um, that's a whole different thing. What was I talking about before that? About splitting them and how... I feel like this movie is a lot more nice in its approach. Like, I described the other one as harsh. Nice isn't the best word, but softer, I guess. And sort of how it's revealing things and how it's, like... Babying isn't the right word, because it's not, like, dumber than the original or anything. It's just, like, a softer, more happy... It's like, this is a happy ending, get it? Yeah, even though it's all the same stuff. Um, I feel like I had a better way of explaining that. But I got distracted in the middle. Let me go back to chat. I'm sure that's pretentious and all, but he has nothing to do with the actual criticism of the film. Well, truth, tell him! Tell him to us. Was Asuka supposed to be grown up? That's why her outfit was shredded? I guess that might work, too. Um, the part where he makes assumptions about Anno and how he is too rich to sympathise with normal people really pissed me off. Um, uh, I was going to say something about the Oscar stuff. Miller had told me, like, there was, like, half of the film was on somebody's ass or something. Was that supposed to be the Oscar scene or the Mari scene or something? 
I was anticipating this, like, dramatic final shot that was just somebody's ass that Miller had warned me about. But it never came. Uh, yeah, the Reddit seems to immediately ship Shinji and Mari. Doesn't seem like th- that at the end, to be honest. I mean, you can. You can interpret it any way. I don't think it's, like, a definitive there together. I view it more as, like, she's Yui's friend. And um, she's, like, the flirtatious aunt... Not aunt, but the aunt figure type character. Like, the older woman that's a little too touchy. And it's and it's cute because uh, we don't treat them the same as if it was an uncle figure. Uh, and because Mari's got big boobs, and we like them. Uh, Gendo, re- realizing that Yui was in Shinji, and then going back and hugging Shinji is so good. I almost thought it was going to be bad, because I'm like, don't hug him, we get it, don't hug him. But then I liked the hug, so I was like, okay. But yes, the Yui was in- inside of... Um, but I like the Asuka version of that more, where she, the, the, she's freaking out. Because obviously these are two thing, different things, and I don't think the movie is worse for not having this Asuka stuff. But I like... A lot of the Asuka stuff is cut out. Like, a lot of the stuff I most like about Asuka is cut out. I still think she's probably my favourite character, even in the rebuild, just because personality-wise. But, um... Like, her father, like, fucking the nurse while she's in earshot, even though her mother is, like, dying in the other room or going insane. And all that fucked up stuff from Asuka's past is, like, it's so, like, good. Um, Asuka, again, as a kid, is much cuter in this film. If we go back to the old series being harsh and this one being nicer, where Asuka in the, um... In the original series is kind of cute when she's younger, when we see her as, like, a little girl, but she's also, like, fierce and, like, crazy and angry. Um... But her seeing Shinji in the fucking suit was... Shinji in the suit was cute as fuck. Um, and and he's, like, grabbing... Gendo's got him, and he doesn't want Gendo, and he goes back to Yui. Obviously, it all works. He's a little trepidatious around his father. He loves his mother and all that. Yui continuously having the wings. I kind of like Yui's appearance more in the, the end of Ava. Uh, I don't know if I explicitly said this, but I don't think this movie is as good as the end of Ava. I don't like the rebuild as much as the original series, but it's two different things. It's like... A 10.1 and a 10. I like them both in, in very different ways because they're very different approaches to the same story. And this is actually something Miller had also told me about, about how Anno might think that, like, he wants Ava to become Gundam or something. I feel like you can retell this story all the time. Uh, and as long as the characters feel right, like, they do feel right in the rebuilds, then it would be, like, perfect to do it again um, in, like, 10 years. I don't think Anno wants to do it. I feel like he's very much done with this now. Um, though I don't know him. Don't want to goat Jesus out and project a bunch of bullshit onto him, but, um... Where was I going with that fucking point? But I feel like it works. Like, the iconography works. The the motifs work. If you carry these over to tell it in very different ways, as long as the theme is the same, like, it'll have the same resonance in, in, in different ways. And, and I just... I really like it. I really like the, the, the Yui speech and the ending to this and the the positive conclusion. It, it, it really makes you work for the... Because a lot of bad shit happens in Evangelion. Uh, more so in the original series, I would say, to the point where people think it's, a like, an, uh, an unhappy ending. Oh, you call that a bad ending? Um, fuck, I'm losing my train of thought all the time now. Where was I going with that? It's much softer, I think, was the ultimate conclusion of whatever that was saying. I keep getting distracted. We got a focus chat. What are you doing? Um, it was like a Godzilla set with small buildings. Yeah. Um, this was cool, Miller's linking a tweet. Fuck, I feel like I was going somewhere with that last fucking thing and I fucked it up completely. God damn it, we need to stop forgetting things. Big brain, I do kind of have a headache. And I forgot to take an Advil. Oh yeah, this stuff was fucking sick. I love it so much. Um, they He tried to do as much of the visual stuff that he did in End of Ava in this. Now obviously he can't do as much because again, you can't do the flashing images. Though he... Definitely, this movie comes with a massive epilepsy warning because there are some flashing lights when things are exploding. Um, but yeah, fuck this is cool. Let's like and retweet it. God, I, I I don't want to engage in the discourse. I don't want to hear anybody talking shit about this movie, just like I don't want to hear anybody talking shit about The Last of Us Part 2, and I don't want to hear anybody talking shit about the fucking Attack on Titan ending. Just get away from the discourse. It's all bad. We're positively... We're positiving... We're positiving out over here, and we ain't doing anything else. Um, maybe I should rewatch Finland Saga and give it, like, an 8. And then I don't dislike anything in the world. Because now we like the rebuilds, we like the Berserk films. Maybe we even like Vinland Saga, <laughs> the anime. 
Um, it's just a different retelling, but it's not, though. It's like the same shit with a bunch of filler. I don't know. Oh, we can read Miller's review as well. Don't let us forget about that chat. How long until the Pokemon Direct? How long do we have? Um, the Ray at the end was holding a doll with uh, Simbi written on it, by the way. I didn't catch that. I don't... Why does she have long hair? Oh, I was going to talk about the Yui stuff and how she appears in this movie. Because she's got like a crown of thorns, clearly, with the Jesus imagery. Though there's a bunch of other Jesus Jesus imagery. The crosses are everywhere, right? Uh, but she has like angel wings and then she's got like a crown of thorns on the end of one of her wings. And it's... Uh, um, the shots of her and Gendo holding each other as they retract back is really cool. The shots... The Gendo backstory and how it's done with the imagery and the... Uh, the I don't think imagery is the right word. Just the the art style for that is really good. Um, that's all great. I love that abstract shit. Everybody knows that. Um, uh, there was kind of the live action thing, because I feel like there's that one shot of the exterior right before I don't know if it's after the last scene well then that would be the last scene or before it where it's of the train station and it almost looks like it's real life and then there's CG models of anime characters superimposed over over it though it might just be really good CG for the background art I'm not sure also the face of the thing looks very like real it looks like it's completely uncanny valley and that's part of the point and it looked really good and I liked it um the face of the ray thing I can't even remember that part of the movie Things were happening fast, but that was really good. Raying the baby was very cute, though. All the Ray stuff was very cute. Um, her death is very cute, too. Oh, Pen Pen's been breeding out here. There are a bunch of penguins that look like Pen Pen 14 years into the future, whereas in the second movie, or maybe we saw him in the third movie, it was just Pen... No, it wouldn't have been, because we would have seen these ones in the third movie. Um, all the other penguins look different to Pen Pen. So Pen Pen has been fucking... Uh, that is Ava Law. Also, they leave... Because I was talking to Miller about this again. Everything's talking to Miller, apparently. Um, about how Ava Unit 1 is left to float in space or whatever at the end of End of Ava as proof that humanity existed as Yui's soul is in there and Yui is the best of humanity and all that stuff. Um, Miller said that there was something like that in this film. Do they leave all the animals out in space? Because they... Because they make the... They explicitly say that, like, the... the What is it called? The uh, the wonder is, like, the ark. Because it has, like, the... It's preserving animal life on it, too. There's, like, I guess two of every animal in the fucking thing. Is that what's left in space? Because they, like, did eject that stuff, right? Is that what Miller meant by that? Um, there's a bunch of interesting little details in there that... Uh, a bunch of them are going to go unmentioned in this review just because we're not thinking about them right now. But I liked a lot of them. I feel like I like all of them. If there was one I didn't like, I would probably remember it. I'd probably bring it up. Um... I think Asuka was still holding feelings. She immediately walks away from Shinji after saying she had a crush on him. But that's an Asuka thing. She's not going to, like, kiss him there. Um... Though we never did get the Asuka Shinji kiss in, in the rebuilds. Um, or the jerk-off scene. Oh, they definitely didn't have the jerk-off scene, even though... When they started doing End of Ava imagery... I, oh, I didn't even talk about the time the two times I welled up a little bit. It was the Asuka backstory. I think it was right before she saw... I feel like I paused it right before she saw Shinji in the, uh, in the little suit when he's like a toddler. It does imply that she's like a year older than him. Because she looks a little bit older than him in, in, in that flashback. Uh, she had to grow up quicker or something, maybe, because she didn't have parents. Um, and then when they started playing the end of Evangelion behind Rei and Shinji in that one scene, I nearly cried both times. I didn't actually cry at any point. Um, whenever they would do end of Ava imagery, like, explicitly, I would lose my shit. I don't know. It's like the... the um, the red letter media me meme where you point at something you know and, and and you say, I know what that is, but it works every time. Let's face it, everybody's susceptible to that. Um, so, like, when uh, Ray and when it showed Asuka and, and Shinji sitting in the plug suits on the, on, on the beach with the Red Sea in the background, it was like, oh, fuck, this is some real shit. I love it. Um, and I, oh, the point of this is I was going to talk about two scenes that they kind of got out of, which was the jerk-off scene and, and, and Misato kissing Shinji. She doesn't kiss Shinji, she hugs him. But later they, they say something explicitly when thinking of Misato that it's like, oh, Shinji's now an adult now. Because obviously in the end of Ava when Shinji gets kissed by Misato and she says that was an adult kiss, we'll do the rest when you come back. It's supposed to represent Shinji's now man. Um, 
but everybody likes to meme on it for the pedophilic undertones. Uh, and the other one is obviously the Shinji jerking off over Asuka meme. Um, that doesn't happen, but when Asuka appears on the beach there, all her clothes, like, ripped out. And we talked about earlier that it might represent the curse of the Ava being lifted or whatever, and she's, like, uh, growing. Um, I think it was also just supposed to be, like, Asuka's sexual right here. Shinji could jerk off, but he's not at that point. It's just kind of a reference to that scene. Um, there is no I'm so fucked up moment, though. Again, end of Ava a lot harsher with all this stuff. Instead, Misato and Shinji just hug. Uh, she also gets shot and stuff. It's again, we're doing this. We're hitting the same primary beats, just in different contexts with the same thematic resonance and stuff like that. Um, holding feelings, maybe not, but she's still not grown up like she believes. Well, even in the last shot, like Ray and Kara were talking to each other, and that's sort of a reference to another scene that I talked about in one of these other videos about how I love the scene in episode 24 where where Ray and Karu meet at the top of the stairs, and uh, Karu says, you're Lilith or whatever, and, and Ray doesn't know what that means because she literally woke up last episode. Um... But yeah, just like them talking to each other was was cute. I don't think they're together or anything. But Asuka's also sitting on the bench alone. Um, they kind of cut out all the Asuka class rep stuff. They have like one scene together. I guess class rep isn't really bitchy in this movie at all. So maybe it makes sense that she's just a normal housewife at the end. Like in the original series, Asuka and class rep are, are very close. In this movie, it's much more Mari uh, and Asuka that are very close. I guess... We were talking about earlier how Gendo is trying to recreate uh, his life in Shinji, and that's why Mari is around. Because um, at some point I thought maybe Mari is the daughter of that woman, uh, but then, like, she goes to Fuyutsuki and says, Professor Fuyutsuki, like, and nobody's called me that name in a while, implying that they were... she was one of his students. It also implied that maybe Fuyutsuki was undermining Gendo the whole time. Um, obviously, the, the, the point of Gendo and Fuyutsuki is that they're both in love with Yui, uh, and so they would do anything to get her back, and, and that's part of the point, though Fuyutsuki starts to have, has always been, uh, I, his, his love for her isn't platonic, like, there's that scene in the flashback episode where he's very clearly looking at her boobs, and that's really the only implication we ever get, that he's, like, in love with her romantically, but it's very, it's like a, with Fuyutsuki, it's very much like a, she, he doesn't want Yui back so he can marry her or anything, he just likes her being around. Um, where are we going with that? And, like, Mari being there, and we were talking about that scene. Oh, and that's sort of the reason why these two men are, like, so bent on doing all this crazy shit. Though it seems to be implied that maybe he was undermining Gendo in some way, because he calls, like, he's, he looks at, like, the new Ray models and says, like, your arrogance, Akari, has gotten us to this point. And then he willingly, seemingly dies when he bursts into the LCL. Um... It's funny, they cut all the Ray stuff where everybody sees Ray before they die. Um, and they also cut, like, the everybody seeing what they want right before they explode into LCL. I guess um, that's um, that's probably because not everybody explodes into LCL in this movie. Just Fuyutsuki does. Because um, there's a moment where Yui grabs him by the face, right? Or am I confusing that with the Ritsuko and Maya kiss thing? I feel like he definitely sees Yui and is, like, in the end of Ava. But whatever. I don't know if I came to a conclusion there, but good stuff. Um, holding on to feelings, but maybe not, but she's still not grown up like she believes. Yes, the whole, po the whole point of Asuka's character is that she wants to be treated as an adult. She thinks she's an adult, but she's not. She's like a spoiled little brat. Not spoiled, but she is very... She always calls Shinji a brat, but really she's the brat. She tells Shinji to own up to his feelings when really she should own up to her feelings. Oh, we were going to get into the recreating the Shinji stuff, and that's where we got into the Fuyutsuki and Mari stuff. I was going to say that maybe Asuka is just supposed to be an other side of Shinji, like an other side of this dynamic. I feel like this is more. This would have more evidence, if we give a fuck about that, to support it in the original series, where it feels more like not really a dual protagonist thing. Shinji is very much the protagonist, but Asuka's role is much more in the original series. Um, to the point where it's like the two different sides of a person, like the two different sides of humanity, right? Shinji and Asuka are so very different, um, but they have the same characters around them and the same sort of Gendo experience and they have to, and their mothers are both, uh, they have to understand that their mothers are with them and things like that. I feel like I had more to that idea when I thought of it, like, ten minutes ago than I do now. Like, the key piece that makes it make sense, but I'm forgetting it now. 
this whole review has been me forgetting things, but there's a lot to fucking think about, and I've only had, like, an hour to think about, and half of that has been on stream. How long do we have until the Pokemon Direct? Um, it's probably at 11 o'clock, right? So I probably got 50 minutes. Um, no, I meant the scene with Toji's sister, a lot of her ass in that scene. There's, like, one shot of her going, uh, like, falling to her knees. That stuff was maybe the most melodramatic stuff, where they're both going to shoot Shinji and then neither one of it do it. Seems like a very quick switch for them. Um, there is sort of Choji sister shipping with Shinji too, where Asuka's like, I think Asuka's the one that says this, what are you, his wife or something? Um, and in the third movie, she does like tell Shinji to do what he wants and like, just don't pilot the Ava. And then she's mad at him. It's cute. Um... But, like, if we're trying to do, like, who's Shinji ending up with, I feel like it's very much left open. Um, it's a sequel to the original, so I don't really need every scene in the original to be there. I don't think it's a sequel at all. I think it's a, just a retelling, a reimagining. Um, but, yeah, at no point where I advocate for all those Asuka scenes to be in there. I don't, I don't like advocating for things to be changed in things um, or to pretend or we're going to rewrite the scene so it makes more sense or some stupid internet criticism shit like that. A sequel in the way that the universe seems to reset after the after the end of Ava and Kari remembers it. I don't think I don't think that's supposed to be literal. I feel like me and Miller clash on this a lot in Attack on Titan 2 um, about whether or not Ymir is literally creating Titans. Um, like the Kari, the different versions of Karu is just supposed to be that there are different versions of Shinji. Like you are a version of Shinji, and everybody is a version of Shinji, and like everybody goes through this experience of they suffer and then they lose hope, and then but it's important to get it back. I feel like it's more supposed to be like there are different versions of Shinji. Is in like everything is Shinji, everything is this struggle. This struggle will always exist in every person forever. And so, like, remember this message is more the point of that stuff. Um, and Karu was like, I feel like this is... Because uh, Karu, there's part of Shinji's, like, the exploration of Shinji's psyche in End of Ava, where he's talking to Shinji, uh, not to Rei and Karu specifically. Um, and I feel like they touch on that stuff. Um, but yeah. I forget if it was just seeds or animals too uh, that was getting blasted out. I think, Jesus Christ, we're a little behind if we're, we were talking about that ages ago. But um, even Asuka's face looks older in that scene. It's cool. Uh, yes, it's at 11. Uh, Kari talking about writing Shinji's name in the Book of Life seems pretty literal. I don't know why else that would be there. It's all metaphorical bullshit at that point. Shinji isn't literally talking to Rei on the set of a movie where it flashes end of Evangelion images. It's just supposed to be like a... It's, it's funny because it shouldn't be explained, right? That's kind of the whole point. And I was thinking about this. I was like, I was thinking about uh, lines for like a, a, a video title when I was lying down thinking about this after I finished it. About uh, making a video called Art is Not Meant to Be Criticized or something like that. And then another version of that, of the title of that potential video would be that analysis videos are bad for art or something or video essays or something like that. Art shouldn't be analyzed or, or something like that. Or it sort of gets into this thing and I feel like Ava breaches over into this territory a lot and there are a million other things, more abstract things that do this. Where, um... It, it there's something like when Miller says that and tries to take it literally, like I can't say why that's wrong. It's just kind of intrinsically wrong to me, um, in sort of how you engage with this type of material. In so far as like writing his name into the book of life, there isn't a literal book of life. He's not literally writing his name. It's just sort of a, like your imprint will always be there. We will repeat this always. Shinji exists everywhere. Shinji is you. You are Shinji. Um, I will always be there with you. That type of thing. But uh, difference of interpretation, I guess. I mean, it would be a foundational difference, but... Um, where are we up to? And it seems like Karu and Kaji became friends over the time skip, making uh, me think that the stuff in Q preview happened. No, that's that wasn't real. That's fake. That's all Karu's mind, where he wants to be the commander. Because they hit on this. This is another thing they flesh out a shit ton more, to the point where I've never even picked up on this before, but now I see it if I reflect back, is that they like to parallel Gendo and Karu a lot. Because Karu does appear in front of Gendo as he's dying in the end of Ava, and I always thought that was weird. I, I remember talking about this in the third one, and this is also a reference kind of when he calls him his father in... Um, maybe Karu is like an abstract version of Shinji, and that's what we're supposed to take away from it. Because they're kind of the Guts Griffith, Akira, Aki, 
what was the fuck is his name? Acura and Rio thing, because they're the black and white thing, right, that anime likes to do and manga likes to do, um, of sort of reflections of each other. Um, but they harp on this a lot, because you literally see Karu as commander uh, in the nerve thing, but I think that's just supposed to be because Karu and and Kaji both like nature, and it's supposed to just like connect them and that thing. I don't think that's literal at all. I don't think that actually happened. Um, but again, this goes into a literal disconnect that me and Miller are having here. Um, the coffins were literally on the moon, though. Yes, but everything, nothing is literal in Evangelion is kind of what I'm getting at. Reality doesn't exist in Evangelion. That's why at the end we're getting into weird uh, cuts of uh, breaking the fourth wall of having the, the scene be unfinished and the directions being on the page and why there's live action bits in the end of Ava and why it looks like there's a few live action bits in this. It's It's not... It, it, it kind of works against itself because if you want to get hung up on this, it kind of throws out the entire story and all the characters because it's not real. But I feel like part of the point is that obviously we know that fiction isn't real and it's about getting these thematic resonance out and these feelings into it and this kind of interpretive stuff. And I always felt this regarding Evangelion. Now, this isn't real for all stories. I don't think Naruto or something is like this where it's very much a literal story that makes sense very obviously and there are thematic through lines and underlines there that are uh, complicated. But I don't think part of the message of Naruto is defying the medium. I feel like Ava is very much about defying reality and going into the anti-universe and things like this. Uh, it's just supposed to be like these emotions, these experiences, are, uh, they always exist in these different uh, realities in the imagined and in the real world and things like this and that these experiences are real or whatever and that's all that's real. There's a bunch of abstract bullshit we can get into here, but I don't know. I'm definitely not communicating this the best way, but that's that's how I feel about all this stuff. Um, I don't know why things can't actually happen in the story as well as symbolize things. Well, things do. That's how most stories do it. I think part of Ava is uh, a meta commentary on that in certain ways, where it's where where it's supposed to like break. There's like that scene in the, in the end of Ava is much more of this, where it literally reflects on the audience and you see the full cinema um, and things like that, uh, which I think reintroduced this more than it's definitely more explicit in the end of Ava than in this one. But I, I feel like it's very much still always there. Um, I know this is one of the conflicts I have is because I know at some point with a lot of things, I would have thought exactly the same way Miller thinks about this now. And I cannot for the life of me walk you through how I got to this point. Um, I feel that way about a lot of things, where you see people, like, saying things you used to say, but you have a complete disconnect, and you know you used to be exactly like that, uh, but you can't, like, walk your mind through, or if you wanted to walk them through where you are now. Um, but that's completely different. Usually that has... Uh, consequences and it's like somebody's being like an anti-feminist or something like he used to be this is just art bullshit it doesn't matter at all but um i don't know what else do we talk about um there are people who can explain all the stuff about the ancestral race evangelion uh, imaginary and so on just because we don't fully understand it doesn't mean it's all completely not real but what about all the fourth wall stuff and stuff like that is are we explaining that too um, but yeah, I don't know anything about the ancestral race or things like that. So I guess it's possible. Like, if you're right about nothing being real, then it's real dumb wasting all the time and lore stuff about Gendo explaining each point of the impact and so on. But it's not, though. It's just not. It's, it's like, fun and exciting and fascinating, and it works in the universe, but breaking the universe is part of it. Um, the fourth wall stuff is because they're in the anti-universe or whatever. But they're not really in the anti-universes in End of Ava. I feel like that's trying to make the End of Ava stuff again a little bit more fleshed out. Um, but I feel like there's a bunch of other shit we haven't even talked about yet. Um, but I fucking can't remember it. Um, Ray working with like the the older workman woman was cute as fuck. I liked all that stuff. Um, for the Kensuke stuff, Kensuke does walk in on Asuka being naked and doesn't react to it at all. Um, 
I don't think Ken is with Asuka because then he was definitely seeing this 14 year old girl naked all the time with implications of being into her. Um, I think I talked about this in DMs and I haven't talked about this on the stream yet, but about how, um, Kensuke has taken up the Kaji role in Asuka's story uh, as being like the older man that she's into and wants respect from. She's always she has a nickname from Ken Ken, and she's she's like very like she never questions him or anything like that. And at the end, when we're doing the Asuka uh, psyche exploration stuff, um, she, he's the one that pats her on the head for validation. Whereas I would imagine in the original series it would more be um, Kaji. Kaji and Kensuke are kind of very similar to each other. Um, Hmm. Uh, but yes, the dull stuff at the end. Uh, Rain never says, I won't be your doll or whatever. Big mistake. Uh, I, I was kind of anticipating that, but it's not in there. I don't think it would have fit anyway. Um, God, it's such a great moment in End of Ava. I love it, but... Um, in End of Ava, it's because it's Shinji's mind in instrumentality... But I feel like part of the point is that the mind is no different from reality, and that's all tied into it. I like how Asuka wraps her scarf around her neck uh, from then on after Shinji throws up. I didn't notice that, but that is cute if she was actually, like... She's very clearly helping him, like she is force-feeding him to help him, even though she is mad at him. It's just sort of the inherent contradiction between their relationship and Asuka's character. Um, fuck, I was going to go into a point about that, but I forgot it. Um... About Asuka and Shinji, about Asuka and Kensuke, about Asuka and somebody. Um, fuck, I broke again. Somebody help me. Um, fuck, I don't even know where to go from here. What were we talking about? We're talking more about the slice of life stuff. Um, I like the stuff where Shinji's being really depressive and kind of being a little shit, but, like, people being mean to him, it's very clearly portrayed that that isn't going to help. Um, like, Asuka is being mean to him, and then, like, uh, class rep's father is telling him it's disrespectful to keep down this mood, uh, to not eat this food, which is true, and everything everybody is saying is true, but it's still just not going to help the situation, so it's better to just not be mean, and, uh, as Kensuke says, leave him alone and stuff like that. Um... The purification thing was interesting, where they could reverse that stuff like they do in Paris and they're doing it all around. We really didn't talk about the uh, the kids stuff with uh, with Kaji and, and Misato. Um, uh, she also ends up dying like her father, like Kaji did to her, uh, where she doesn't meet the kid and the kid is probably going to be jaded about that uh, when he does learn who his parents are and things like that. It's just a neat way to... Oh, and the Misato bad character design thing builds up to her taking the bad character design off and coming back before she uh, does the suicide mission thing. Um, that was really cool. I'm just looking at the characters now to see, like, hmm, anything to say about them? Um, I like Mari a lot. I wouldn't have remembered a goddamn thing about her before we did this rewatch. Um... Oh, the, the, another, like, obvious thing that I never put together until it was spelt out in this movie is about the headphones, like, blocking you out of the outside world. Um, that was a neat little metaphor. Oh, I love Gendo getting out with the with the Walkman in his back pocket, like, getting off at his last stop and then seemingly dying or going away. He's not in the movie after that. Um, anything else, chat? Anything else? Miller seems to be the only one speaking. We're down to six viewers, too. Um, I like how the village they talk about not knowing if there'll be another day, but, st but still enjoying life, and that kind of parallels Gendo not being able to let Yui go on obsessing over it. Yes, it's always been Gendo's thing, is that he couldn't take the heartbreak, so everybody must suffer for him to get his selfish wish. Um, and it also mirrors the Ray thing, right? Ray knows she's gonna die soon, uh, she dies in a moment's notice, but she's very happy that she got to live happiness, even for a little while. Because uh, that's always been the race thing. Ray never gets a happily ever after. Ray never gets to live in the end. She always dies, but she's always happy when she dies because she's dying for somebody she cares about. Oh, and Ray too is in the movie. Um, Shinji, well, Shinji talks to Ray too, uh, where she's like, "I just wanted to do all this so you would never have to pilot Ava again." And then Shinji says, "Like, ah, I'll take care of you or whatever." She's got long hair in the thing, and then they talk again at the end. So that is kind of Ray too. 
So Miller either lied or he was wrong. Um, oh, I guess we can read Miller's review. What did he say? I liked it, especially the first hour of the film The Village, seeing Kensuke Toji and Hikari. How did I forget her name? Um, no, Hikari is their last name, right? I think I can't remember her first name. doesn't matter. Being good friends and playing large roles is such a nice surprise. Ray's stuff was my favorite part of the film, with her learning about the different aspects of life and helping to pull... Her learning the different words was good. Her learning sayonara again, which was something that Ray too always said was cute and all that stuff. Uh, helping to pull Shinji out of his depression. Uh, everything was just really uh, chill and took its time. It's the natural uh, environments looked really great, and there was a nice break from the environments in the previous film and what came after this. The music is great throughout the film, too. But the rest of the film had a lot of the lore stuff and naming of proper nouns and not elaborating mage. I don't care for it uh, in Ava. Um, and some of it went over my head, but there was still a lot I enjoyed here. I appreciate the different animation styles and the abstract imagery here. And some of it looked great, but a lot of the biggest scale CGI stuff didn't look very good. Um, and the same goes for all the action. Shake my head. Uh, which never engaged me. Uh, the, I feel like I should talk about the action more. Um, the highlights of the ending were Shinji and Masato reconciling and sharing their burden. Uh, yes, they take the fucking stupid choker thing off or whatever. Oh, the reveal that Asuka has also had a choker on this whole time it was like clever. and I like that. Um, uh, Shinji and Gendo's talk which showed their similarities and wrapped up for each character I really like how uh, conclusive the ending felt for all the characters and Evangelion as a whole seeing the characters like Shinji and Asuka talk honestly with each other growing up uh, moving on with their life there we go I guess all that was fine I don't rate things on Mal we got Letterbox maybe I'll do that later um Anything else to say, chat? Anything else? Um, my eyes are fucking up now. I'm starting to get a headache too. I was supposed to take an Advil before I came into this, but I didn't. Um, no, no one questioned why there was an entry plug suit that perfectly fits Shinji. Don't the entry plug suits perfectly fit everything? Uh, are you bothered about the sci-fi stuff, like Gendo being e uh, immortal, like, uh, you didn't like the brainwashing? The brainwashing just seemed like an unnecessary explanation for something that was, like, implied. The brainwashing thing isn't a big deal. Uh, Gendo being immortal, was that a thing? Do I not remember that? Uh, it makes sense. Oh, yeah, because he gets shot, right? Uh, and he doesn't die. But yeah, he's got, like, a weird eye thing going on. He's done some weird science shit. Makes sense to me. Brainwashing just seems weird to me. Corny a little bit. I don't know. There's corniness all over Evangelion everywhere, and I love it, so... Um, he, he, uh, was An Asuka's angel the same angel that took over her in 2.22, 2, her angel had the same double arm thing? Yes, because they, at the end of 2.22, they say, like, the angel might have gotten into her brain, so even though she, like, we see her being worked on in a medical facility, it's, it's supposed to be, like, a she might still die thing, but it turns out it just gave her superpowers. Also, she's always had the eye patch on, and it's been, like, what's under the eye patch? I thought it was going to imply that she was, like, an android or something, but instead it's, like, the angel has been inside her, she merges with it. It looks really cool, it kind of gets beaten immediately, but it still looks pretty cool. Um, I don't know, what else to say about that? Um, he scoops up his brain, yes, I remember now. Um, but yeah, Ritsuko, like them recreating the Ritsuko scene, Ray isn't there obviously from End of Ava and her shooting immediately instead of not shooting. Um, there's not the Gendo... Um, there's not the cutout thing where you don't hear what Gendo's saying. Um, uh, the moment where, where Gendo and Masato see each other there is really cool, but then everybody comes out. Um, do we have anything else to say, chat? If we had more detailed notes, I'd talk about every little thing, but I don't know if we do. Oh yeah, her medical thing, coma in 2.22, she was surrounded by the same tech things that stopped Corazization. That might be true. Uh, Realize and Gendo has the same voice actor as Aki Ino as Crete, pretty evil sounding voice. I don't know, I've always thought Gendo was like authoritative, but he, he sounds sad all the time. Aki Ino's just a meanie, right? But, um... 
looking at these characters again, trying to kind of peek something. What else are some of the criticisms? Is Tourist still here? Are we are we talking shit about this movie? Um, if we put in, what 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 do we get if we uh, if we put in like Evangelion three point plus one review or something or analysis? What comes up? Foxen video, you gotta love that from five months ago. We must have seen it in Japan. Um, an actual review. Not even a fake review, but an actual review. Quick review. None of these have uh, good thumbnails. Worth the wait? Well, that's nice, I guess. The One Last Kiss song, I'm not... Uh, I feel like Thanatos is, like, incredible, and then Come Susa Todd is, like, the most iconic fucking song in a movie ever. Um, I don't know. Maybe the, 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 the lyrics... The lyrical songs in End of Ava... Uh, in the original series are much better than the rebuilds, I think. Uh, goodbye, Evan. Get all of Evangelion. How come fucking? How come my goodbye video didn't get sixty-two thousand fucking views? Huh? This must be the goat Jesus video. I guess I'm not gonna uh, um spoilers. I guess for a bad movie. What are the like to dislikes on this thing? Let me read some of the comments. Let's see that. Hold on, I've never even heard his voice. Is it multiple people? Shinji getting divorced in the next impact is just waiting to happen. Oh, I did like how they broke it down and were like, the, the second impact was to cleanse the sea, the, the third impact was to cleanse the earth, and that earth scent thing did come back, um, and the fourth one would be to cleanse our souls. I can't bring myself to disagree with gross Jesus from... Oh no, he's probably got sycophants that probably like the movie, but are going to say they... They don't like it now. Oh, gross. I can't bring myself to disagree with Goat Jesus most of the points in his right. I had a lot of fun with this film. Oh, no. I feel like I was in this position when I was, like, 14 where I would like something and then a big YouTuber would come out and say they didn't like it and then you would have to, like, cuck yourself because you'd take everything the YouTuber says as, like, gospel. So you've got to be like... Now, I don't actually disagree with anything he did say, but, like, you'll point out something they didn't talk about and say you like that instead... Oh, it's some weird cucky bullshit. I don't like it at all. I had a lot of fun with this film, and I know the problems are all over the place. I despise this line. I, I see it everywhere on the internet in criticism. No, there is no such thing as a guilty fucking pleasure. Ugh. This implies objectivity, by the way. You can't think everybody can have their own opinion on something if you think there are problems all over the place, but you liked it anyway. Um, this is just a disconnect in how you view art. However, in spite of all this, I still enjoyed it, I guess, for me. Oh, my God. We don't need to read this one. I want mean ones that I can make fun of. Another thing I noticed is that Gendo always kept saying he was lonely and had no one. Are people going to get mad that Gendo was, like, vulnerable in this movie because they missed it in the fucking rest of it? Is it going to be, like, a Don Draper wouldn't cry type thing or something? Even though he was shown in the flashbacks hanging out with Mari when he was a teen, even before he met Yui, he's looking over at Yui. Um, and also Shinji was around people and still felt, being around people, what do you think lonely is when you're literally in a room alone? <laughs> uh, and I also hated how much fan service was crammed into this movie. Sometimes I wonder if I was still watching Evangelion or just some random porno. Miller was mad about this too. Did, did I just not notice? There's like, oh, I guess it's like when Asuka's sleeping. Asuka hanging out without wearing anything is a very Asuka thing, I think. She's very confident. She's like, fuck you. I'm not covering up. Fuck you. It's not It's not her fault you want to look at her boobs. Uh, it's not about a happy ending or a sad ending. It's how you get there. My problem with the rebuilds is that it gloss over most character development. The character development is handled differently. And you make... I feel like a lot of the conversation with the rebuilds will always be like, should you watch the rebuilds without having watched the first one or something? Just like they're two completely different things. That's how you have to look at it. Uh, and make and uh, make you assume that the same characters you know from the show, but they aren't. I feel like they absolutely are the same core characters in slightly different positions that come to the same conclusions and go on the same arcs. Uh, so if you treat the rebuilds as a st- see, if you treat the rebuilds as a standalone, they do develop characters very poorly, false and not true. Um, 
knowing there was no possible way it could wrap up anything without being an incoherent mess. What was there to wrap up? <laughs> I didn't need a metatextual goodbye to all Evangelion. I just wanted a good movie. Is that even what it was? And instead, we got what felt like... I'm talking about continuing stuff over here. Instead, all we got was... It felt like a two point uh, two and a half hour of Anna going, see how much shit this is. It's all for you, the fans. I hate you all. People should be... Like, it should be illegal to talk about authors when you're talking about their art. These idiots can't... They can't figure out how to do it. Um... It's clear hatred towards Asuka being the most poignant in that it didn't even care to show she existed in the world without Avis. Did you, did they did you miss her on the train station in the corner? Uh, what I disliked uh, the most was Shinji becoming fine after one cry on a bridge. It happened so slowly. Completely disregarded his entire personality. Oh, these comments don't have a lot of like. It, it feels like they listen to Go Jesus and now they're trying to come up with a reason. Um, I'm so glad to hear your voice. I really miss you. Sorry for the English. Oh, we got whatever the English equivalent for French is. We got that a little bit at the beginning of the movie with Mari. Um, is this the real end? Question mark. People are so concerned with the real whatever. What the fuck do you think this is? Um, one last kiss or how Anno is lying to you seems like we were going into this with a, a clear head I don't know none of this, god she did look pretty cute here uh, this thing was cool this movie was fucking great why I hate Neon Genesis even <laughs> how did I never see this I must have it has a watched thing um why is there a Geekvolution video showing up, huh? Um, God, I, I remember. I didn't even watch the end of the that thing. Even Galling 3.0 is a masterpiece. Well, I guess that's true now. All right, chat. Anything else to say? Um... Um, realizing Gendo is the same. Alright, so that do you think they should have spent more time on Kaji Jr.? No, I think it was it was just basically a plot device. I love the exact characterization he has of just being a smiling kid with the purple hair. I somehow didn't put it together when it was like I saw like the Kaji thing. I'm like, oh, it's Kaji's son, and I, I didn't even think that it would be Misato's son as well, um, which would kind of be in Kaji's character, but. Um, he had purple hair, and then when they're in the car afterwards, and, and Kensuke says it's Misato, so it's like, oh yeah, the purple hair. But him just being like a smiley, like, I felt like all of that was perfect in establishing everything I need to know about that character in just like one frame. Um, so no, I think it was handled pretty great. Shinji not having a coherent arc across the films is criticism I've heard. I mean, I, my biggest point coming out of this is how it's exactly the same as his other arc, so, um... Somebody said this in chat the last time, where they were just like, Shinji regresses because he gets happy and then is sad again. But we already saw him be sad. Like, I hate that shit. I feel like I see people talk about characters like that all the time. Where it's like, they think their arc is done when the character is happy, and when they get sad again, it's like, oh, we're just doing the same thing. It's regressing. I fucking hate that shit. Um... I've heard people say you can enjoy this movie using your emotional brain, uh, but not your logical brain. You only got one brain, fellas, and it's both of them at once, and it's a lot less of that logical shit than you think, and it's about 90% subconscious, so have fun thinking about that. I think they say in the video that they've grown up, Asker in the plug suit scene is porno uh, bastardization of End of Ava. Like when Shinji's jerking off over her and you see her boobs? More bastardized than that? Uh, just <sighs> people should also never talk about sexuality <laughs> I feel like I'm coming to that conclusion too uh, I was only a little distracted in that scene with Toji's sister that's it I feel like I remember one shot where she went to her knees and it like followed her ass down sexuality has always been like a massive part of Ava um, and it's fine to get distracted or whatever but also the distraction is your fault you're the one doing it um, do you think if, like, a straight woman saw that, like, 
what's what's the go there? Is it still bad to her because she's not turned on by it? I don't know. Shinji coming out of his depression is well built up. Uh, multiple Ray talks. Yeah, Ray like visits him like every day. Going fishing with Kensuke, talking to Toji. He slowly starts saying things too. Uh, Kaji Jr. seeing Ray die, but not letting it keep him down. Yeah. But I feel like that's the end. I feel like we've talked a lot. I feel like the Pokemon director's in 20 minutes, so i got to get out of here. Um, those were the brief thoughts. I do have a bunch of ideas for Evangelion videos. I was going to try and script a, a Cowboy Bebop video tonight, because I feel like I can do it. I feel like I'm on a roll here where like I've basically done nothing but work, I guess, which is watching these movies, working on thumbnails, doing all this stuff. I really haven't done anything else, and I've kind of liked it. It's kind of fun. Um... So I was like, maybe I'll watch the, maybe I'll, I can write the rest of this Bebop script tonight and then record it tomorrow, and then that we'll have a main channel video out soon too. Um, but I'm really not in the mood to go into Cowboy Bebop now. I want to do something Ava related. So maybe I'll write out an outline for the how the the Shinji thing and the four parts and how it works in the movies and in the original series. Um, I don't want to make a half-assed vert like like. The end of the, the the fourth rebuilt is a great movie or something to that thing and just do like a ten minute basic bitch analysis of of that stuff. I still want to do the uh, uh, the video about the original series about the Shinji Ray scenes. It's hard though. It's hard to like. I'm not in the mood for the original series right now because this one is so soft and nice, and it's like the other one is hard and coarse. But I think it's better. And it's like, I don't want to engage with that. It'll depress me. Even though it does end up coming to a happy ending. Like this one, it's much more comfy. The The rebuilds are way more comfy than, than the original series. Um, I just want to think about the rebuilds, I think, for a little while. Um, but we'll see. Whenever I promise to script a video, it never happens. Wait 20 minutes to react to it. Yeah, the laptop definitely isn't going to last that. Um, but I ain't reacting to it. I'll react to it on Twitter. It's not going to be good. I don't want to watch it. Why? I don't want to go through more Pokemon discourse or discourse is bad. Anyway, we've got to end this YouTube video. Uh, full two-hour scripted analysis when? Uh, don't get your hopes up. Do you like any aspects of the rebuilds more than the originals? No, because I'm refusing to compare them in that way. I feel like they're two fundamentally different things. So, like with the Gendo thing, it works the way it's handled in the original, and it works the way it's handled here in two very different ways. Here it's much more fleshed out, and the original it's, it's left very subtle. I like both of those aspects. I like things when it gets fleshed out, and I like things when they're kept subtle. It just depends. Like... Again, I was talking about the Asuka backstory and about how it's not in the rebuilds, but I don't want it to be in the rebuilds. The rebuilds are fine the way they are, don't change things. Um, so yes, I don't... Like, more than the original? No, because I, it would be like, do you like this more than Berserk? Uh, in the same aspects. There are no similar aspects. Well, there are, but like, it's pointless to say like things like that. That's how far apart I'm viewing them at this point. Um, and I feel like I got to that stage with the Berserk films as well, in separating them. Um, but anyway, to the YouTube audience, that has been our fucking talking about the Rebuild series. Uh, Pokemon Crystal video should be coming out soon. I hope we can get some more views over here. We're dying over here. Um, unless it's uh, Naruto or Hunter Hunter, apparently. We're dying on the second channel. But it's been a fun ride, watching the these last four days or so of pure Evangelion Rebuild. It's been a lot of fun. Um... And I've liked it. And turns out they're all really good. Even 3.3, a notoriously memed on movie. Uh, movie in my community. Now, a beloved 9 out of 10. With two boring intro action scenes that hold it back from being a pure 10 out of 10. Uh, all of Evangelion is great. All of Evangelion is perfect. That's not true. But uh, it's the best stuff ever. Um... I wonder if I was to do top 10 movies, would there be three Evangelion films in the top 10 now? I feel like there might be. There might be as many Evangelion films as there are Tarantino films. There might be more. Jackie Brown is the only one that's holding onto its spot definitively. But that's all nonetheless. That's all uh, by the numbers. YouTube audience, you got to get out of here. Stick around for more content. Hopefully there'll be some Evan Evangelion scripted videos on the main channel. Uh, wait for them all, is all I got to say. But um, with that being said, support links in the description below. Thanks.